Hey there, welcome to another episode of Energy Express. I'm your host, Zach Harold, and it is Friday, so you know what that means. We get to go visit Miss Amy on her farm and learn all about a new fruit or vegetable. Let's check it out. Hi friends, it's Miss Amy with West Virginia University Extension Service Family Nutrition Program. Welcome to Learn, Grow, Eat, Go. Today, we're gonna talk all about cabbage. I have some cabbages here with me, but first, where do you think cabbage fits on my plate? That's right, it fits into our vegetable category. Cabbage provides our bodies with fiber. Also, it provides us with vitamin C. Fiber is important to keep us going to the bathroom regularly, and vitamin C is important to keep our immune systems healthy. So let's take a look at a cabbage. We have three kinds of cabbage here. We have our traditional cabbage, we have a red cabbage, and then also bok choy, which is a Chinese cabbage. Cabbage feels kind of waxy on the outside and it's full of individual leaves. As you continue to open your cabbage, the leaves will get smaller and smaller. Let's take a look inside this cabbage. Wow, you can see each individual leaf starting to get larger and larger. Cabbage feels moist on the inside, but not overly wet. So where do cabbage come from? We know we can find cabbage at our farmer's market in the summer and fall, and we can also find it at our grocery store, but how do cabbage grow? Let's go visit a farm to see how cabbage grow. So how does cabbage grow? Cabbage grows in gardens and on farms and it's a plant that has a lot of large leaves and develops a small head in the center. A small head is really a lot of leaves tucked tightly together. There are two main types of cabbages that we grow in West Virginia. There's early season cabbages and late cabbages. Early season cabbages start to be harvested in June while late season cabbages normally require a little more time and are good for storage. When we plant cabbages, we have to be mindful that cabbages have a shallow root system with many feeder roots close to the surface. It's best to make sure that you mulch your cabbages in or provide some type of protection so that the soil cannot dry out. Cabbages like to be fed, which means they need a lot of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium during the year to help them grow the best. When we harvest cabbages, we harvest what's called the head in the middle of the cabbage, and that's what we're used to seeing in the store. When you're choosing cabbages at the farmer's market, farm stand, or your local grocery store, you want to choose firm heads with shiny, loose outer leaves. Cabbage can be refrigerated for up to one week. You'll remove the outer leaves and run it under cool water. Cut the cabbage into quarters and then cut the hard white core out of each piece. Cabbage can be eaten raw, stir fried, or roasted. Today's story is The Carrot Seed, written by Ruth Krauss. A little boy planted a carrot seed. His mother said, I'm afraid it won't come up. His father said, I'm afraid it won't come up. And his big brother said, it won't come up.
Every day, the little boy pulled up the weeds around the seed and sprinkled the ground with water. But nothing came up. and nothing came up. Everyone kept saying it wouldn't come up. But he still pulled up the weeds around it every day and sprinkled the ground with water. And then, one day, a carrot came up. Just as the little boy had known it would. The end. Besides eating our fruits and vegetables, it's important that we get physical activity every day. Let's go see what fun activity Miss Shannon has for us to try. Hi friends, I'm Miss Shannon and today for our physical activity, we're gonna be doing something called I am a growing plant. Today we are going to pretend to be parts of a plant. Let's begin by curling your body up on the floor and pretending to be a seed. Seeds are tiny, so make yourself as small as you can. Now the sun is going to shine and the rain is going to fall. Are you ready? We're about to feel raindrops. Now the seed has water and it has begun to get bigger. Open up your arms and start to sit up. What grows underground from the seed? The roots do. So let your roots grow by sitting with your legs underneath you. Next, stems grow from the roots. Straighten your body to be a long, straight stem. Sometimes stems are curvy and curly. Make your body curvy if you want to be a curvy stem. Let's stand up on our legs because our roots are still growing. Now stretch out your arms and open up your hands because our leaves are growing from the stem. Think about the flowers that you have seen. Flowers are different shapes and colors and are so beautiful. Lift your head up as tall as you can and show us a big, beautiful smile. Now let's review some of the parts of a plant. When I call out a plant part, I want you to move that plant part. Roots, wiggle your legs. Stems, shake the middle of your body. Leaves, wave your arms and hands. Flower, smile and nod your head. And now let's do it again. Let's begin by curling your body up on the floor and pretending to be a seed. Seeds are tiny, so make yourself as small as you can. Now the sun is going to shine and the rain is going to fall. Are you ready? We're about to feel raindrops. Now the seed has water and it has begun to get bigger. Open up your arms and start to sit up. What grows underground from the seed? The roots do. So let your roots grow by sitting with your legs underneath you. Next, stems grow from the roots. Straighten your body to be a long, straight stem. Sometimes stems are curvy and curly. Make your body curvy if you want to be a curvy stem. Let's stand up on our legs because our roots are still growing. Now stretch out your arms and open up your hands because our leaves are growing from the stem. Think about the flowers that you have seen. Flowers are different shapes and colors and are so beautiful. Lift your head up as tall as you can and show us a big beautiful smile. Now let's review some of the parts of a plant. When I call out a plant part, I want you to move that plant part. Roots, wiggle your legs. Stems, shake the middle of your body. Leaves, wave your arms and hands. Flower, smile and nod your head. Thanks for joining us today for I Am A Growing Plant. I hope you guys had fun.
Hi, my name's Noelle, and I am a health educator for WVU's Family Nutrition Program. And today we're here at Beautiful Capital Market to talk about what influences your beverage choices. Well, did you know that the human body is 60% water? Of course you did. But that means that the water is very important for our body. It lubricates our joints, it regulates our temperature, it cushions our brain, and it helps that blood flow throughout your body delivering oxygen. The human heart pumps 2,000 gallons of blood a day, and it needs water to do that. So it's very important that we get our eight glasses of water every day. But what influences you when it's time to choose a beverage? Well, there are two major factors that influence our decision-making processes. Those are internal factors and external factors. Internal factors are the things that come from within us, like our personal preference, our knowledge of what's healthiest for us, or what we have a taste for. External influences are those things that come from around us, uh, what our friends are drinking, or what our family culture is. Those are external influences. So I have a couple of scenarios here. Let's see if we can figure out whether they are internal or external influences. Scenario number one, you're at a soccer game and your coach insists that all the players should drink sports drinks so that's all that's provided. Is that an internal influence or an external influence? If you said external, you're right. It's what's outside of you and what's available. In this particular scenario, you can combat it by bringing a water bottle with you and drinking water instead. Scenario number two, you're packing to go to summer camp and the weather is expected to be very hot and you know you're gonna be outside a lot. You decide to pack your water bottle so you can stay hydrated. Is that internal or external? Hmm, internal. It was your own personal knowledge that you wanted, we're gonna want water, that made you pack your water bottle. Very good. Number three. You're having Sunday dinner at your grandmother's house and she always gives you a full plate of food and a tall glass of milk and she expects you to clean your plate and drink all of your milk. Is that internal or external? Hmm, that is external. It's your family's expectations for what you do, not what you personally want to do. And that, in, in this case, it's externally, but it's a good influence. Last one, you're at a friend's house for dinner. They're serving unsweetened iced tea or milk. You don't like unsweetened iced tea, so you choose milk instead. Is that internal or external? Hmm. It is internal. You used your own decision. You made your own decision by deciding which one you preferred personally, and that was milk. So, if you want to increase your water consumption and leave out a lot of those sugar-sweetened beverages that aren't necessary for your body, the number one thing you can do for yourself is to carry a water bottle with you wherever you go. If you have a water bottle with you, you're much more likely to drink water rather than a sugar-sweetened beverage. Thank you. Hi friends, for today's activity, we are going to be making a seed mosaic. A mosaic uses different sizes um, put together to make one piece of art. So for ours, we are going to use different sizes and colors of seeds. On the Junior Master Gardener's website, you can find the seed sorting mat, which helps you be able to categorize your seeds by shape or by color. You can also just use a white piece of paper and do this on your own. You will need glue. Clear glue is the best. A recycled lid. And then a couple varieties of seeds. We have here some pumpkin seeds and some cow peas. So the first step is to use your seed sorting mat and to sort your seeds, especially if they're come mixed all together, by either shape, size, or color. Then what you will do is you will start in the center of your mosaic and you will put glue. And you will start by placing a seed in the glue and then take a different type of seed and go around in a circle and try to fill as much of the space as you can as you go around. Once you have that first layer done, you'll need to put some more glue
and then alternate back to a different type of seed. So what you want to do is you want to continue to do this with your different seeds. So you'll start in the center, go one around, go around with another kind, and continue until your entire tray is filled. So once your seed mosaic is dry, you can either just set it somewhere or you could punch a hole and hang it up by your window. I really like using the clear lids because it still allows some of the sunlight through. And you can use any kind of seeds that you would like. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that you get to try this activity at home. If you do, have your parents take a photo and tag us in either Facebook or Instagram. Thank you. Let's go visit Miss Molly in the kitchen and learn how to make cabbage wedges. Hi, I'm Molly with West Virginia University Extension Family Nutrition Program. And today we're gonna make Parmesan roasted cabbage wedges. Say that three times. <laughs> the first thing that we need to do anytime we start cooking is wash our hands and our cooking surface. I've already done that, so I'm ready to get started. We're gonna preheat our oven to 425 degrees. Anytime we are cooking with fresh vegetables, you wanna make sure you wash them thoroughly under running water. And I have scrubbed the outside of my cabbage with a vegetable scrubber, and now I'm ready to cut into it. So we're gonna cut our cabbage in half. And then turn our cabbage over so that our flat side is down to make it easier to cut. And cut those halves into halves. And then at this point, we are going to remove this tough core from the cabbage. A lot of times if I'm making coleslaw or something where I'm shredding the cabbage, I bang the cabbage really hard on the countertop and that breaks up this core. But since I want to keep this cabbage intact for the recipe, I'm just gonna cut out this tough inner part. While we're waiting for our oven to preheat, I'm going to place my wedges on a parchment paper lined cookie sheet, cut side up, and then I'm going to brush about four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil onto the wedges, and you want to make sure to get down in all the nooks and crannies. This would be a fun job for kids to do. You don't often get to paint in the kitchen. And this is gonna help our salt and pepper stick to the cabbage. Now I'm gonna add some salt and pepper to each cabbage wedge. Cabbage is full of antioxidants. It is high in fiber, so it's gonna be wonderful for our overall digestive health. And I've got some fresh cracked black pepper. Cabbage also has vitamin B6 and folate. And you can definitely not add pepper to some of these if you have children that would turn their nose up to that. I think some um, crushed red pepper would be good if you like spicy. And now we're gonna add about a tablespoon of grated Parmesan cheese to each of our wedges. And I'm gonna do the wedges, the cut side that's exposed, and then kind of turn it over. 
because we don't want to miss out any of this yummy Parmesan cheese. And hopefully that olive oil is going to help it stick. This is another job that little hands might enjoy. And it's always a good idea to buy a big block of cheese and grate it yourself. It's a money saver. Just make sure we get as much of that cheese on the cabbage as we can. And it looks like I'm ready to go in the oven. So this is going to go in our 425 degree preheated oven for about 25 minutes. And you can keep an eye on it after 25 minutes. We've cooked our cabbage for about 25 minutes. And as you can tell, it is nice and golden brown. The, the cabbage leaves have kind of opened up and that oil has gotten down inside. And I am excited to try this. Mmm. It is still crisp, tender, and really delicious. That Parmesan cheese adds a lot. This would be a great side dish to serve alongside chicken or fish. And it is something that the kids can help you cook in the kitchen and then enjoy afterwards. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you check out our webpage for the full recipe and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all of our video uploads. Thanks again, bye-bye. Today has been a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. That brings us to the end of another week of Energy Express programming. We'll be right back here Monday morning, so we hope you will too. We'll see you then. We are in Gat Mills, West Virginia at Sweet Springs Valley Water Company. I am Mabel Cox, manager of the facility. Local people decided that they were going to try to see how bottled water would sell. So it was a small office to start with, with just a couple people working in it. A lot of people thought that they were crazy for starting a bottled water business, like when you can run, get your tap water. We, we are only strictly spring water. The only thing that I can really tell you about this spring, it is, is located in Peters Mountain. It is um, owned by a local a man just lives up the road here. Once it gets into the facility, it goes through um, a filtering system, which is six one micron um, filters that takes all of the bacteria out. In case there is anything missed in that, it goes through the UV light. Then it is ran through an ozonator. And the ozonator is, it will kill any bacteria that is in the water at all. Our te water testing is done daily in-house and then it is um, sent out weekly to a state certified 
um, lab in Beckley. Mainly they are checking for E. coli, but we have never in the, the 30 years that they've been here, there has never been a hit on our product water. Once it goes through that ozonator, we bottle it. it um, all of the bottles will be ran through a wash and rinse cycle. Um, and then after that, the water will go into the five gallon bottles. There is a little cap that fits on top of it. That cap is also sprayed with ozonated water. Once they're capped, they come out into the uh, warehouse on a conveyor. Then our production worker will either put them in our racks for our trucks or our um, pallets. They will load their trucks every morning, um, take it to either the home resident delivery or business delivery. Um, so we are, um, going to possibly in the real near future start selling canned water with our label on it. This is already in a few of our local stores. We are just hoping that we can get our label on it. We feel like down the road in the future that they will be um, getting rid of like the plastic, small plastic bottles just because of the environment. This will be more environmental friendly because all of this is recyclable. This is the only water that I drink. <laughs> and maybe just because I'm a little bit partial to this water, but yes, like, I shouldn't name any names, but and a few others, I feel like it kind of tastes like the bottle maybe. And with this water, I really don't even really taste anything but our water. <laughs>